What's up everybody, Elizabeth here with Bloom Creative Company, a Squarespace design agency. And in this video, it's actually a three part series of everything content block editors. So all those little blocks that you can add into your site to add text or video or a space or a line, we're going through every single one of those and how to adjust them, how to make them more custom and how to use them in your site. So this is part one, two and three, let's dive in. So here we are on our Squarespace site. And right now it's a template. It has all the built-in templated options here. And if we wanted to start playing around with all the different content pieces that we can add into the site, I'm gonna go over here to the pages and I'm just gonna make a new unlinked page. Make it blank, start out completely blank. We'll call it our test page. And this is where we are going to play around with all the different content editing pieces. So here we are, test page. So in order to edit any page, you're gonna to have to click edit here and it's gonna bring the page full page, full screen. And then this is where we're ready to go. So we're in Squarespace 7.1 right now. And what that means is Squarespace did a big upgrade to the platform and now all the new sites that are being created now are going to be on 7.1. Some, some of you might be veterans to Squarespace and are on older platforms and notice that this looks a little bit different. The content editing pieces are the same in the content block that I'll show you, but the layouts are a little bit different. So in this video, like I said, we're going through what all those content blocks are. And then in the next video, we'll take that another step further um, that will just go beyond what we're doing. So we're just gaining knowledge here and getting pieces of knowledge, building on it, and then you are just gonna be a pro by the end of this. So when we're here, we're gonna add a new page and we're just gonna add a blank page. There are a ton of templates and they're all beautiful and they have so many great options and we'll plug and play and we'll figure out what that looks like in, a, in another upcoming video. But for right now, we're gonna add a blank page. We're just gonna walk through every content piece. So when you start a new page, you get a text block text. So these bubbles here are what are going to pull up that content editor. So you hit the bubble and these are all of your different blocks that you can add into your site. So we're going to kind of go one by one here to things that are pertinent to most sites. Now some of you might be a band, some of you might be a restaurant, and we'll go into more specific niche, niche websites later on, but we're just gonna keep it basic and kind of broad for any type of website building. So first and foremost, text. Every website has text. This is what the text looks like. So anywhere this bubble pops up and you click on the bubble, that's where these are gonna appear. So you'll notice this black line that appears as well. So if you have, if we're gonna get a text block and I click and hold, that black line is going to move around. Now this text will fall wherever that black line appears. So whether it's on the side of those two text blocks that I have in the middle, on top, below, and we'll get into more about other content pieces and how they fit around, but this is where you are going to place it. So if I want it on the full width of the page for how the page is set up, I'm just going to stick it right there. I'm going to put another sample text and you can edit this text just like a word editor, essentially. You can make it bold, italicized, make it in the center, right justified. You can change the heading, paragraph size. These are all your different text options here. So we'll make it big. We're gonna unbold that. Maybe, you know, if you wanted to make it a quote, you can make it a quote, you can number it, bullet it, whatever you wanna do. So we're gonna keep the text here, keep this text here. Now, let's say for some reason you needed a spacer. Now these spacers can be used in so many different ways and it's also one of the things most of my clients get tripped up with and how to use a spacer and space things around. So if we were going to add a spacer and I wanted it in between the two texts, I would hover over the two texts and drop it. Now the spacer you can move up and down and make you know, the space between the two texts larger or smaller. Now, a word of advice, if you don't want a huge space on mobile, now this space will show up as a space in desktop, but in mobile, this could cause 
a lot of people to trip up. So you want to add another spacer in it just to the side. And this will cause your spacing to be uniform within mobile as it is in Squarespace. So we have two spacers here. We have text here. Now let's say we want, we only want this text to take up half of the, the page. You just add a spacer. And right now it's fitting there pretty nicely in the half, but you can always move that over and squish it down. You can move it back. So if we wanted our heading to not go any further than here and then the rest of the text to go throughout, that's how we would do that. So if we click on this bubble again, now we notice that that black line reaches all the way across. That's where our next piece is gonna go. Markdown, we're not gonna worry about this. This is a little more advanced. Let's add a quote. So in our template, it's gonna pull up Lorem Ipsum here. So if we wanted a quote, best website ever in our source, it's going to auto-populate in here. And if we hit apply, we'll see that our quote is there. Now, if we want to use these spacers, maybe we want to condense the quote a little bit more on the page. So if I grab this and put it on one side of the quote and grab a spacer and put it on the other side, now I have a more condensed quote through the page. Now, if I want to make it a little larger, I can make it larger, just make sure it's even. Now let's say I wanted to add another piece of content down here. Let's go with an image. I'm going to upload an image here. Let's say that we are starting, let's say this is for a t-shirt company and we want to add, you know, a picture of some t-shirts on here. We're going to let that process. And process and process. There it is. Okay. So I hit apply. We'll see that this image takes up big part of this page. Now let's say we want to add those spacers again and condense the image to one side. So I'm going to grab and hold. Now look at this black line. It stops here. It could go, it goes through the top of the page. So when it covers the entire side of the page, that spacer is going to condense everything to the side. If I just want it to be on the image block, I would hold this and make sure that line, I would drag this over until that line only covers the image and I would drop it and now everything back here is full page again this is to the side maybe I want it a little bit bigger now we can edit this image block a little bit further because we see this pencil here anything you see a pencil over you're going to be able to edit further so here with the text pretty self-explanatory this quote hit the pencil this is where you can redo or put your text into the quote and here under the image if you click the pencil and you click design, you have a couple different image options. So right now it's in line where you can put a caption, you could do a poster with the title and we can edit how big or how small that looks there. You can do a card with your text on the side and your subtitle text. You can do an overlap, a collage or a stack. So depending on what you're looking for, those are your different options within um, the editor. You can also, I, I don't ever use the stretch to span the container. What I do use is this light box. So depending on what kind of images I am putting in the site, light box will enable someone to click on the image and for it to become full screen. So let me show you what that looks right now. It's on dark overlay. You have the option for a light overlay. If I hit apply and save, now I'm, if I click this arrow here, this is essentially what the site would look like if it was live for you to test. So if I clicked here, that's your light box. So right now it's black. If you did the light, it would be white. And then you could just hit an X. So if I go back out of test mode, go to edit, we go back into edit image. A couple other things that you can do within the image block is this image editor which will pull up here. You can change the brightness, contrast, saturation, kind of like what you could do on your iPhone with your images. Same kind of setup here. You can crop it into any size. You can make it a square, you know, whatever you want to do. You can flip it, flip it again. And then here you can add a filter if you wanted to add a filter. So I always think back to Instagram, always had the first filter. So it's like kind of like being on Instagram, you're changing that filter of your image here before you put it on. So I'm gonna hit save. 
save, even though we didn't do that much. One quick part two here. This is where you're, for SEO purposes, this is where you're gonna rename the image just to make sure it reflects what the image is in your company. And we'll get into SEO in a later video as well. Um, let's see, so here we are in the design. These are your different design options, your light box mode, what color the light box is, and under animations, you can have it do any sort of animation. So we'll do a fade in. Uh, maybe we don't like that tilt up. Or reveal. They all look really nice. So I'm gonna hit apply. So let's say, you know what, let's just keep, let's keep plugging away. So we're gonna hit this bubble again, video. So this is where you would add a, either a YouTube or a Vimeo URL, and that would go right here, and it will auto pop, it'll look like just like it does on a YouTube channel. So video URL goes here. You can use a custom URL that you'll be able to upload yourself, and then the caption is pulled from YouTube. So whatever you have it, uh, uploaded as, you'll put it here, or you can delete it and create your own, whether you want to display it or not. All right, that was part one. What'd you think? Let me know in the comments below if anything wasn't clear, didn't make sense, if you want me to elaborate more, if you have questions on other stuff, let me know. And also smash that subscribe button because I want you to get every video that we put out there because we just wanna help you manage your site. We all pick Squarespace for a reason, right? Because we knew that we could easily manage our site and not pay thousands of dollars hiring a coder and developer to update our site for us. So please subscribe so you get those new video updates. And then again, let me know what you need help with, where you're at. And if you are a business and you are stuck and you're looking for something more custom, more robust, that's what we do. And we're happy to help. So send us an email to hello at bloomwebsitedesign.com and it'll be in the notes down there. And let us know what you're looking to get out of your site and we're happy to help you. So again, I'm Elizabeth with Bloom Creative Company, a Squarespace design agency. Stay tuned for the next video, part two, and we'll go through the remainder of those content editing pieces in part two and part three, so stand by.